Hello everyone, Dr. Sue here. This is part one of a three-part series for dental suture selection and knot tying. The goal of the series will be to help you choose the right suture for your practice. In this first video, I will be breaking down the components of a suture to help you understand the different types available. Sutures are used for several reasons, including to approximate a wound, aid in hemostasis, and to help promote soft and hard tissue stabilization and healing. There are a few factors you have to keep in mind when choosing a particular suture. This includes the wound size, tissue quality, the amount of tension you would need for that wound to remain stable, the ease of use, and chair time required. Firstly, the suture is made up of two parts, the thread and the needle. We will start with the thread. The thread can be described by either its size or its characteristics. The size is actually not based on diameter or width of the suture, but it is based on the United States Pharmacopeia or USP system and is denoted by point O's. The nomenclature is a bit counterintuitive, but the higher the number, the smaller the thread size. For example, a 3.0 gut will have a thicker thread size than a 4.0 gut. This concept is similar to the needle gauge nomenclature that we're familiar with in dentistry. In general, the smaller the thread or the higher the number are used for smaller wounds or more friable tissues. In dentistry, the most common sizes are between 3.0 and 6.0. There are three thread characteristics to consider. First is whether it is absorbable or non-absorbable. Second is whether it is natural or synthetic. And third it is whether it is a monofilament or a multifilament thread. Beginning with the first characteristic, absorbability. Non-absorbable material is the ideal choice when you need high tensile strength for a relatively longer period of time, or when you desire more control over when the suture ought to be removed. Non-absorbable materials can maintain their tensile strength for over 60 days. Common materials for non-absorbable threads are polypropylene, which has a moderate amount of memory and is a bit slippery during knotting. And there is also polytetrafluoroethylene, PTFE for short, which is easier to handle and it stretches as the tissue heals without loosening. Silk is also a non-absorbable suture, but it's no longer a common thread due to the poor soft tissue reaction around it. The main disadvantage to using a non-absorbable thread is that chair time increases, as you must recall the patient to remove the suture. This may also cause a little bit of patient discomfort. In contrast, absorbable sutures are broken down by the body and should not require a second visit to remove them. As the suture deteriorates, it will not dissolve evenly throughout its length, and it often actually comes loose along the in long strands. The strands are safe if they're accidentally swallowed and the patient should be informed of this. Two common materials for absorbable threads are gut, which is derived from sheep or bovine intestine, and polyglycolic acid sutures or PGA for short. Gut-derived material is natural, whereas PGA is synthetic. The absorbable time is the largest factor to consider in the decision-making process. Plain gut typically takes about a week to absorb, and it is very useful for extraction sockets or simple flap closure. If you need the gut to last an additional week, or two weeks in total, you can choose 
chromic gut sutures. PGA threads will absorb in about three to four weeks. PGA is a strong braided material that is used for areas with high muscle pull or for larger procedures where prolonged tension on a wound is required for healing. The limitation is that due to its braided nature, it can wick bacteria into the wound. You will see some inflammation during the, the healing, um, but this often is not a significant uh, effect to the overall healing process. The handling property of this suture is wonderful and the knot is very secure. For a faster absorbing synthetic thread, you can choose PGA Rapid, where the absorption time is approximately half of that of normal PGA. Monocryl is a, an absorbable thread that deserves a special mention. This is a monofilament thread with advantageous handling properties. The tensile strength is comparable to PGA and the main advantage of monocryl is that the soft tissue reaction is very gentle. And as you use it, it glides through the tissue quite smoothly without pulling it. One of the reasons monocryl thread glides smoothly is because it is a monofilament as compared to a multifilament thread like PGA. Overall, monofilaments have less friction during knot rundown, less resistance when you pull it through the tissue, less debris or bacteria accumulation, you gain these advantages, but you do risk an increased chance of knot slippage, uh, thus possible knot failure, so careful knotting is, is required. Gut, PTFE, and monocryl are all monofilament threads. In contrast, multifilament threads are braided. They are less slippery, therefore is easier to handle intraoperatively, and are less likely to come loose during healing. This closes off my discussion of the thread. And now I'll move on to the next component of the suture, the needle. Similar to the thread, the needle can be broken down and described by several attributes. The size, the curvature, and the cutting surface. Ease of use and tissue quality are going to be the deciding factors in needle selection. First, the needle size. This denotes the length of the needle. Smaller needles are between 10 to 13 millimeters in length. They are used for smaller wounds or more delicate tissues. If you're using it for larger wounds or more resistant soft tissue, you might opt for a bigger needle, either 16 to 20 millimeters long. Longer needles also have a larger diameter and they are easier to handle. However, when the size is larger, the puncture wound that it creates in the tissue will also be larger. If you are operating on smaller uh, and more delicate tissues, you may opt for a smaller suture size or needle size. Next, the curvature of the needle is denoted as a fraction of a circle. It can range from one eighth of a circle to five eighths of a circle. The smaller the fraction, the smaller the curvature, thus the smaller the bite into the wound. Three eighths and one half curvatures are the most commonly used in dentistry. Lastly, the cutting surface of a needle refers to the cross-sectional shape of the point of the needle itself. Typically, a cutting needle has a cross-section shape of a triangle where the apex of the triangle points to the inner curvature of the needle. A better design is a reverse cutting needle where the apex of the triangle points to the outer curvature of the needle. The advantage to this is that it will create less wound laceration risk compared to the conventional cutting surface. Now you have an understanding of the components that make up a suture. 
There are an overwhelming amount of choices when it comes to suture selection. In the end, the most important component to consider for thread is the absorption time, where longer lasting sutures are chosen for wounds that will take longer to heal. For needle choices, the tissue quality and the ease of use will factor into your decision making. For my recommended sutures to carry in your practice, please check out part two to this video series. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you again.